What is the difference between an endangered species and a threatened species? An endangered species is one that is in danger of extinction. Throughout all or a significant portion of its range. A threatened species is one that is likely to become endangered in the foreseeable future. Can one predict how populations will grow? Mathematical models can predict growth when populations are growing at their maximum rates. There are two distinct patterns, logistic or exponential growth. In logistic population growth, the population grows in cycles. Responding to limiting factors in the environment. An example would be a population of insects that is limited by the amount of available food. Exponential growth is growth at a constant rate of increase per unit of time. And is used to model continuous population growth in an unlimited environment. An example of exponential growth would be the doubling rate of bacterial. Growth on the turkey left unrefrigerated after Thanksgiving dinner. How does an independent variable differ from a dependent variable? An independent variable is manipulated and controlled by the researcher. A dependent variable is the variable that the researcher watches and slash or measures. It is called a dependent variable because it depends upon and is affected by the independent variable. How do dissecting microscopes differ from compound microscopes? Compared to compound microscopes, dissecting microscopes also called stereoscopic microscopes provide a much larger working distance between the lens and stage in order to dissect and manipulate specimens. The light source on a dissecting microscope is above the specimen since the specimen is often too thick to allow light to be transmitted from a light source below the specimen. Dissecting microscopes are always binocular, which provides a three-dimensional image. Why are dilution techniques important to biologists? Dilution techniques provide simple and accurate procedures to, one, change the concentration of a solution. Two, indirectly weigh a solute whose weight is significantly below the usual limits of analytical balances, and three, determine the quantity of bacteria in a culture. How does an in vivo study differ from an in vitro study? An in vivo study uses living biological organisms and specimens. In contrast, an in vitro biological study is carried out in isolation from a living organism. 
such as in a petri dish or test tube. What is a control group? A control group is the experimental group tested without changing the variable. For example, to determine the effect of temperature on seed germination. One group of seeds may be heated to a certain temperature. The researcher will then compare the percent of seeds in this group that germinate and the time. It takes them to germinate to another group of seeds, the control group, that have not been heated. All other variables, such as light and water, will remain the same for each group. What elements are common to all types of microscopes? Three elements are needed to form an image, a source of illumination, a specimen to be examined, and a system of lenses that focuses the illumination on the specimen and forms the image. What is a double blind study? In a double blind study, neither the subjects of the experiment nor the persons administering the experiment know the critical aspects of the experiment. This method is used to guard against both experimenter bias and placebo effects. What are the steps of the scientific method? Research scientists follow these steps. 1. State a hypothesis. 2. Design an experiment to prove the hypothesis. 3. Assemble the materials and set up the experiment. 4. Do the experiment and collect data. 5. Analyze the data using quantitative methods. 6. Draw conclusions. 7. Write up and publish the results. What is the status of the African elephant? From 1979 to 1989 Africa lost half of its elephants from poaching and illegal ivory trade. With the population decreasing from an estimated 1.3 million to 600,000. This led to the transfer of the African elephant from threatened to endangered status in October 1989 by sites. The Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species An ivory ban took effect on January 18, 1990. Botswana, Namibia and Zimbabwe have agreed to restrict the sale of ivory to a single, government-controlled center in each country. All countries have further pledged to allow independent monitoring of the sale packing, and shipping process to ensure compliance with all conditions. Finally, all three countries have promised that all net revenues from the sale of ivory will be directed back into elephant conservation for use in monitoring, research, 
law enforcement. Other management expenses, or community-based conservation programs within Elephant Range. What are the steps of microscopic autoradiography? In microscopic autoradiography, the desired radioactively labeled compound is first added to cells or organisms, and the material is then incubated. After a period of time to allow the radioactive compound to become incorporated into newly forming intracellular molecules and structures, the incubation is stopped and the biological specimen is rinsed to wash away the excess radioactive compound. The specimen is prepared in a conventional manner, sectioned and placed on a microscopic slide. The slide is then covered with a thin layer of photographic emulsion. Next, the prepared slide is placed in a sealed box for an appropriate period of time. Several days to several weeks, to allow the radioactivity in the cell to expose the emulsion above it. Upon removal from the sealed box, the emulsion is developed. And the specimen is examined under the microscope. When did the last passenger pigeon die? At one time, 200 years ago, the passenger pigeon, Ectopis migratorius, was the world's most abundant bird. Although the species was found only in eastern North America, it had a population of between 3 and 5 billion birds, 25% of the North American land bird population. Overhunting caused a chain of events that reduced their numbers below minimum threshold for viability. In the 1890s several states passed laws to protect the pigeon, but it was too late. The last known wild bird was shot in 1900. The last passenger pigeon, named Martha, died on September 1, 1914 in the Cincinnati Zoo. What is the scientific method? The scientific method is the basis of scientific investigation. A scientist will pose a question and formulate a hypothesis as a potential explanation or answer to the question. The hypothesis will be tested through a series of experiments. The results of the experiments will either prove or disprove the hypothesis. Hypotheses that are consistent with available data are conditionally accepted. What is a bioinvader? A bioinvader is an exotic organism usually introduced into an ecosystem accidentally. These bioinvaders are non-native plants and often overwhelm the native species. Examples of bioinvaders include the kudzu vine. Kudzu was first introduced in the 1930s by the United States. 
Soil Conservation Service for a good purpose to control erosion. Kudzu now grows uncontrolled in the southeastern United States, pulling down power lines and killing trees. Other bioinvader species include zebra mussels, Great Lakes, Purple Loose Strife, Northern United States and Canada. And the Asian long-horned beetle, first reported in New York but now spreading into the Midwest. What is the Kyoto Protocol? The Kyoto Protocol was an international summit held in Kyoto, Japan. In December 1997, its goal was for governments around the world to reach an agreement regarding emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. The Kyoto Protocol called for the industrialized nations to reduce national emissions over the period 2008 to 2012 to 5 percent below the 1990 levels. The protocol covers these greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Other chemicals such as hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, and sulfur hexafluoride were to be added in subsequent years. Who invented the compound microscope? The principle of the compound microscope, in which two or more lenses are arranged to form an enlarged image of an object, occurred independently, at about the same time, to more than one person. Certainly many opticians were active in the construction of telescopes at the end of the 16th century. Especially in Holland. So it is likely that the idea of the microscope may have occurred to several of them independently. In all probability the date may be placed within the period 1590-1609. And the credit should go to three spectacle makers in Holland. Hans Janssen, his son Zacharias, 1580-1638, and Hans Lippershey, 1570-1619, have all been cited at various times as deserving chief credit. An Englishman, Robert Hooke, 1635-1703, was the first to make the best use of a compound microscope. And his book Micrographia, published in 1665, contains some of the most beautiful drawings of microscopic observations ever made. Why do lemmings rush to the sea? Lemmings are a type of rodent whose plague behavior has been studied for decades. Every four years or so, lemming populations in Canada explode to the point where fur trappers describe the tundra as being alive with the little brown mice. In fact, the population density varies from less than 20 mice per hectare. 2.5 acres, in some years to as many as 200 in that same space the next year. What is puzzling to scientists is that while it is possible to observe this population boom firsthand, the impetus for the growth and rapid decline 
the population drops again within a few months, has not yet been determined. Although it has been documented that these population explosions cause an overconsumption of the available food, there is no evidence that such overcrowding can cause the lemmings to become suicidal or even incredibly thirsty and rush en masse into the sea. Instead, the lemming migrations begin slowly with small groups traveling at night and gradually build so that animals travel in larger groups in the daytime. They tend to avoid water but will swim if necessary, lemmings can cross a 656 feet 200 meters. Body of water on a calm night, but most will drown on a windy night, which may be the source of the myth. What is microscopic autoradiography? Microscopic autoradiography is a technique used to localize radioactive molecules within cells. It utilizes photographic emulsion to determine where a specific radioactive compound is located within a cell at the time the cell is fixed and sectioned for microscopy. How does a transmission electron microscope differ from a scanning electron microscope? The electrons used to visualize the specimens in transmission. Electron microscopes are transmitted by the material. The scanning electron microscope beams the electrons onto the surface of the specimen from a fine probe that passes back and forth rapidly. Electrons reflected back from the surface of the specimen, along with other electrons emitted by the specimen itself, are amplified and transmitted to a television screen for viewing. Did dinosaurs and humans ever coexist? No. Dinosaurs first appeared in the Triassic period, about 220 million years ago. And disappeared at the end of the Cretaceous period, about 65 million years ago. Modern humans, Homo sapiens, appeared only about 25,000 years ago. Movies that show humans and dinosaurs existing together are only Hollywood fantasies. How many species of plants and animals are threatened or endangered in the United States? The total number of U.S. species listed as endangered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is 990, 391 animals, 599 plants. The total number of U.S. species listed as threatened is 275, 128 animals, 147 plants. What is the difference between magnification and resolution?
magnification making smaller objects seem larger is the measure of how much an object is enlarged. Resolution is the minimum distance that two points can be separated and still be seen as two distinct points. What is the Kelvin temperature scale? Temperature is the level of heat in a gas, liquid, or solid. The freezing and boiling points of water are used as standard reference levels in both the metric centigrade and the English system, Fahrenheit. In the metric system, the difference between freezing and boiling is divided into 100 equal intervals called degree centigrade, degree C. In the English system, the intervals are divided into 180 units. With one unit called degree Fahrenheit, degree F. But temperature can be measured from absolute zero, no heat, no motion. This principle defines thermodynamic temperature and establishes a method to measure it upward. This scale of temperature is called the Kelvin temperature scale, after its inventor, William Thomson, Lord Kelvin. 1824-1907, who devised it in 1848. The Kelvin, symbol K, has the same magnitude as the degree centigrade. The difference between freezing and boiling water is 100 degrees, but the two temperatures differ by 273.15 degrees. Absolute zero, which is minus 273.15 degrees Celsius on the centigrade scale. How can you avoid buying items made from endangered species? The 1975 cites, Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora Prohibits trade in endangered species Traffic the Wildlife Trade Monitoring Network, suggests that travelers buy wisely. Although it may be legal to buy products in certain popular tourist locations, it is often illegal or may require a permit to bring these objects home. How did the dodo become extinct? The dodo became extinct around 1,800. Thousands were slaughtered for meat, but pigs and monkeys, which destroyed dodo eggs, were probably most responsible for the dodo's extinction. Dodos were native to the Mascarene Islands in the central Indian Ocean. They became extinct on Mauritius soon after 1680 and on. Reunion about 1750. They remained on Rodriguez until 1800. What distinguishes the different types of microscopes? Microscopes have played a central role in the development of cell biology. Allowing scientists to observe cells and cell structures that are not visible to the human eye. 
The two basic types of microscopes are light microscopes and electron microscopes. The major differences between light and electron microscopes are the source of illumination and the construction of the lenses. Light microscopes utilize visible light as the source of illumination and a series of glass lenses. Electron microscopes utilize a beam of electrons emitted by a heated tungsten filament as the source of illumination. The lens system consists of a series of electromagnets. Recent advances using optical techniques have led to the development of specialized light microscopes, including fluorescence microscopy, phase contrast microscopy, and differential interference contrast microscopy. In fluorescence microscopy, a fluorescent dye is introduced to specific molecules. Both phase contrast microscopy and differential interference contrast microscopy utilize techniques that enhance and amplify slight changes in the phase of transmitted light as it passes through a structure that has a different refractive index than the surrounding medium. Which radioisotope is most commonly used for biological specimens? The most widely used radioisotope in autoradiography is tritium, 3H. Tritium allows a resolution of about 1 micrometer with the light. Microscope and close to 0.1 micrometer with the electron microscope. Since hydrogen is common in biological molecules. A wide range of 3H labeled compounds are potentially available for use in autoradiography. 3H amino acids are used for locating newly synthesized proteins. 3-thymidine is used to monitor DNA synthesis. Ribonucleotides such as 3H uridine or 3H cytidine are used to localize newly made RNA molecules. And 3H glucose is used to study the synthesis of polysaccharides. Who is considered the first histologist? Marcelo Malpighi, 1628-1694, is considered the first histologist. For his pioneering work in the science of microscopic anatomy. He used the newly developed tool of the time, the microscope. To examine living things including both plants and animals. His observations included that blood passed through the capillaries and extensive work on insect larvae. Who is considered the first histologist? Marcelo Malpighi 1628 to 1694 is considered the first histologist for his pioneering work in the science of microscopic anatomy he used the newly developed tool of the time the microscope to examine living things including both plants and animals his observations included that blood passed through the capillaries and extensive work on insect larvae.
What are the common types of slide preparations for investigation with a microscope? Commonly prepared slide preparations are whole mounts, smears, squashes, and sections. Smears, squashes, and sections are techniques used to make specimens thinner or smaller. Whole mounts are often used to examine an entire organism or specific organ structure in some detail. Smears are mostly prepared for bacteriological and blood specimens. Squashes are prepared to study chromosomes. Sections are prepared to examine tissues and cells. What are the common types of slide preparations for investigation with a microscope? Commonly prepared slide preparations are whole mounts, smears, squashes, and sections. Smears, squashes, and sections are techniques used to make specimens thinner or smaller. Whole mounts are often used to examine an entire organism or specific organ structure in some detail. Smears are mostly prepared for bacteriological and blood specimens. Squashes are prepared to study chromosomes. Sections are prepared to examine tissues and cells. When was the microtome invented? Although there were cutting engines as early as the 18th century. The first microtome was invented by Wilhelm His, 1831 to 1904, in 1870. Its development allowed scientists to prepare very thin, uniformly sized slices of tissue for examination under a microscope. Instead of the imprecise ones previously prepared using a handheld razor or cutting engines. When was the microtome invented? Although there were cutting engines as early as the 18th century. The first microtome was invented by Wilhelm His, 1831 to 1904, in 1870. Its development allowed scientists to prepare very thin, uniformly sized slices of tissue for examination under a microscope. Instead of the imprecise ones previously prepared using a handheld razor or cutting engines. What are the three main types of microtomes? The three main types of microtomes are the rocking, the rotary, and the sliding microtome. Each type of microtome has a special sharp steel knife to cut the specimen, which is embedded in a wax block. In a rocking microtome the knife is in a fixed horizontal position. The wax block is attached to the end of an arm pivoted near. The knife end is moved or rocked in an arc past the knife edge. On a rotary microtome the specimen moves up and down in a vertical plane. A large hand wheel in which one rotation produces a complete cutting cycle advances the specimen. 
A common type of sliding microtome has the specimen mounted on a moving carriage while the knife is fixed. What are the three main types of microtomes? The three main types of microtomes are the rocking, the rotary, and the sliding microtome. Each type of microtome has a special sharp steel knife to cut the specimen, which is embedded in a wax block. In a rocking microtome the knife is in a fixed horizontal position. The wax block is attached to the end of an arm pivoted near. The knife end is moved or rocked in an arc past the knife edge. On a rotary microtome the specimen moves up and down in a vertical plane. A large hand wheel in which one rotation produces a complete cutting cycle advances the specimen. A common type of sliding microtome has the specimen mounted on a moving carriage while the knife is fixed. How does an ultra microtome differ from a standard microtome? The ultra microtome, developed after 1950 to prepare specimens for examination under the electron microscope, enables technicians to cut very thin sections, 50 to 150. Instead of embedding specimens in wax, small, 0.5 to 1.0 cubic mm. Biological specimens are embedded in very hard synthetic resins such as epoxy. In order to cut these very hard materials, special knives sharper than steel knives are used. The knives are either diamond knives or pieces of plate. Glass broken in a controlled way to produce a fine edge. How does an ultra microtome differ from a standard microtome? The ultra microtome developed after 1950 to prepare specimens for examination under the electron microscope. Enables technicians to cut very thin sections, 50 to 150. Instead of embedding specimens in wax, small, 0.5 to 1.0 cubic mm. Biological specimens are embedded in very hard synthetic resins such as epoxy. In order to cut these very hard materials, special knives sharper than steel knives are used. The knives are either diamond knives or pieces of plate. Glass broken in a controlled way to produce a fine edge. What is the optimum thickness for specimens to be examined under a microscope? Biological and medical techniques require specimens of 1 to 50 micrometers. With the usual thickness being 4 to 5 micrometers for examination under a light microscope. Since an electron microscope has greater resolution, it requires thinner sections of 20 to 100 for biological specimens. Smear preparation is another standard technique used to prepare slides.
What is the optimum thickness for specimens to be examined under a microscope? Biological and medical techniques require specimens of 1 to 50 micrometers. With the usual thickness being 4 to 5 micrometers for examination under a light microscope. Since an electron microscope has greater resolution, it requires thinner sections of 20 to 100 for biological specimens. Smear preparation is another standard technique used to prepare slides. What are the steps to prepare a specimen for examination? The three basic steps to prepare a specimen are fixation, preservation, staining, and mounting. Preservation prevents destruction or decay of the specimen as well as inhibiting microbiological growth. Different stains and dyes attach to different parts of a cell, such as the nucleus. Specimens are mounted in a medium that is also a preservative and often covered with a cover slip. What are the steps to prepare a specimen for examination? The three basic steps to prepare a specimen are fixation, preservation, staining, and mounting. Preservation prevents destruction or decay of the specimen as well as inhibiting microbiological growth. Different stains and dyes attach to different parts of a cell, such as the nucleus. Specimens are mounted in a medium that is also a preservative and often covered with a cover slip. Why is it necessary to fix a biological specimen? Fixing a biological specimen retains a reasonably good semblance of the object as it appeared when it was alive. It allows the scientists to observe details of the external and internal anatomy of the specimen. Why is it necessary to fix a biological specimen? Fixing a biological specimen retains a reasonably good semblance of the object as it appeared when it was alive. It allows the scientists to observe details of the external and internal anatomy of the specimen. What are simple stains? Simple stains highlight an entire microorganism so that cellular shapes and basic structures are visible. Simple stains commonly used include methylene blue, carbolfuxin, crystal violet, and safranine. A stain is applied to a fixed smear for a certain amount of time and then washed off. And the slide is dried and examined. What are simple stains?
Simple stains highlight an entire microorganism so that cellular shapes and basic structures are visible. Simple stains commonly used include methylene blue, carbolfuxin, crystal violet, and safranine. A stain is applied to a fixed smear for a certain amount of time and then washed off. And the slide is dried and examined. What is the purpose of a mordant? A mordant is a chemical added to the solution used to stain a specimen in order to intensify the stain. Two major functions of a mordant are to increase the affinity of a stain for a biological specimen and to coat a structure to make it thicker and easier to see upon observation under the microscope. What is the purpose of a mordant? A mordant is a chemical added to the solution used to stain a specimen in order to intensify the stain. Two major functions of a mordant are to increase the affinity of a stain for a biological specimen and to coat a structure to make it thicker and easier to see upon observation under the microscope. What are the steps of the gram stain? Crystal violet, a primary stain, one that imparts its color to all cells, is applied to a heat-fixed smear. After a short time the crystal violet is washed off, and the smear is covered with iodine, a mordant. When the iodine is washed off, the bacteria appear dark violet or purple. The slide is then washed in an alcohol or alcohol acetone solution. This decolorizing agent removes the purple from the cell of some species but not from others. The alcohol is rinsed off, and the slide is then stained with safranine, a basic red dye. The smear is then washed again, blotted dry, and examined under a microscope. Gram-positive bacteria retain the purple dye. While those that lose the purple color are classified as gram-negative. What are the steps of the gram stain? Crystal violet, a primary stain, one that imparts its color to all cells, is applied to a heat-fixed smear. After a short time the crystal violet is washed off, and the smear is covered with iodine, a mordant. When the iodine is washed off, the bacteria appear dark violet or purple. The slide is then washed in an alcohol or alcohol acetone solution. This decolorizing agent removes the purple from the cell of some species but not from others. The alcohol is rinsed off, and the slide is then stained with safranine, a basic red dye. The smear is then washed again, blotted dry, and examined under a microscope. Gram-positive bacteria retain the purple dye. While those that lose the purple color are classified as gram-negative.
What was Camillo Golgi's, 1843-1926, contribution to histology? In 1873 Camillo Golgi, 1843-1926 Devised a way to stain tissue samples with inorganic dye using silver salts. When he applied this technique and stained nerve tissue, he was able to see details previously not visible. What was Camillo Golgi's, 1843-1926, contribution to histology? In 1873 Camillo Golgi, 1843-1926 Devised a way to stain tissue samples with inorganic dye using silver salts. When he applied this technique and stained nerve tissue, he was able to see details previously not visible. What is the optimum thickness for specimens to be examined under a microscope? Biological and medical techniques require specimens of 1 to 50 micrometers. With the usual thickness being 4 to 5 micrometers for examination under a light microscope. Since an electron microscope has greater resolution. It requires thinner sections of 20 to 100 for biological specimens. Smear preparation is another standard technique used to prepare slides. What are simple stains? Simple stains highlight an entire microorganism so that cellular shapes and basic structures are visible. Simple stains commonly used include methylene blue, carbolfuxin, crystal violet, and safranine. A stain is applied to a fixed smear for a certain amount of time and then washed off. And the slide is dried and examined. How is it possible to measure the pH of a solution? An easy way to measure the pH of a solution is with pH paper. This paper is treated with a chemical indicator that changes colors. Depending on the concentration of H+, hydrogen ions, in the solution. Why were such dangerous chemicals as DDT, PCBS, and CFCs released into the environment? Dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethene, DDT polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBS, and chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, were once widely used. Although DDT was synthesized as early as 1874 by Othmar Zeidler, it was the Swiss chemist Paul Muller, 1899-1965, who recognized its insecticidal properties in 1939. He
was awarded the 1948 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his development of DDT. Unlike the arsenic-based compounds then in use, DDT was effective in killing insects and seemed not to harm plants and animals. In the following 20 years it proved to be effective in controlling disease-carrying insects. Mosquitoes that carry malaria and yellow fever. And lice that carry typhus, and in killing many plant crop destroyers. Publication of Rachel Carson's book Silent Spring in 1962 alerted scientists to the detrimental effects of DDT. Increasingly DDT-resistant insect species and the accumulative hazardous effects of DDT on plant and animal life cycles led to its disuse in many countries during the 1970s. In fact, DDT and PCBS have been added to the list of chemicals known as estrogenic compounds that is. Synthetic substances in the environment that cause the mammalian body to respond as if to estrogen. A group of chemicals with the same general chemical structure and physical. Properties as DDT are known as the polychlorinated biphenyls or PCBS. Because of their physical properties, non-flammability, chemical stability, high boiling point, and electrical insulating properties, PCBS can be used in a variety of applications. Formerly, many products contained these compounds. From electrical circuitry to the dyes and pigments used in paint. To carbonless copy paper, all were manufactured with PCBS. Before production was ceased in 1977, the United States produced about 1.5 billion pounds. 6.8 billion kilograms of PCBS. Chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, are commonly used as aerosol sprays. Refrigerants, solvents, and foam blowing agents. They are in and of themselves non toxic and non flammable molecules containing chlorine, fluorine, and carbon. However, they are thought to have a deleterious effect on ozone concentrations in the atmosphere. How does one prepare a 110 dilution? A 110 dilution means one part in a total of 10. There are three different ways to prepare a 110 dilution. 1. The weight to weight, WW. Method. 2. The weight to volume. WV method and 3 the volume to volume VV method in the weight to weight method 1.0 g of solute is dissolved in 9.0 g of solvent yielding a total of 10 parts by weight one of which is solute in the weight to volume method enough solvent is added to 1.0 g of solute to make a total volume of 10 ml. In this method, one part, by weight, is dispersed in 10 total parts, by volume. Since most biological solutions are very dilute, the accuracy of most research is not affected if a previously weighed solute is dissolved in the desired volume of solvent. The volume to volume method is preferred when the solute is a liquid. 
one milliliter of solute, such as ethanol. Added to 9.0 ml of water yields a 10 part solution, one part of which is the solute. What are the steps to prepare a specimen for examination? The three basic steps to prepare a specimen are fixation, preservation, staining, and mounting. Preservation prevents destruction or decay of the specimen as well as inhibiting microbiological growth. Different stains and dyes attach to different parts of a cell, such as the nucleus. Specimens are mounted in a medium that is also a preservative and often covered with a cover slip. What is scientific notation? Scientific notation allows scientists to manipulate very large or very small numbers. It is based on the fact that all numbers can be expressed as the product of two numbers. One of which is the power of the number 10, written as the small superscript next to the number 10 and called the exponent. Positive exponents indicate how many times the number must be multiplied by 10 while negative exponents indicate how many time a number must be divided by 10. How is Henry David Thoreau associated with the environment? Henry David Thoreau 1817 to 1862, was a writer and naturalist from New England. His most familiar work, Walden, describes the time he spent in a cabin near Walden Pond in Massachusetts. He is also known for being one of the first to write and lecture on the topic of forest succession. His work, along with that of John Muir, 1838 to 1914 and others has served to inspire those others to understand the natural world and provide for its conservation what is the pollutant standard index The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the South Coast Air Quality Management District of El Monte, California, devised the Pollutant Standard Index to monitor concentrations of pollutants in the air and inform the public concerning related health effects. The scale which measures the amount of pollution in parts per million. Has been in use nationwide since 1978. Who is considered the first histologist? Marcelo Malpighi, 1628-1694, is considered the first histologist. For his pioneering work in the science of microscopic anatomy. He used the newly developed tool of the time, the microscope. To examine living things including both plants and animals. 
His observations included that blood passed through the capillaries and extensive work on insect larvae. What are the steps of the gram stain? Crystal violet, a primary stain, one that imparts its color to all cells, is applied to a heat-fixed smear. After a short time the crystal violet is washed off, and the smear is covered with iodine, a mordant. When the iodine is washed off, the bacteria appear dark violet or purple. The slide is then washed in an alcohol or alcohol acetone solution. This decolorizing agent removes the purple from the cell of some species but not from others. The alcohol is rinsed off, and the slide is then stained with saffronine, a basic red dye. The smear is then washed again, blotted dry, and examined under a microscope. Gram-positive bacteria retain the purple dye. While those that lose the purple color are classified as gram-negative. How many acres of wetlands have been lost in the United States? Since access to water is important to industrial development. Many cities are located in areas including wetlands. In the urbanization process, wetlands have been drained filled, or used as dumps. Each wetland area serves as a habitat to many different plants and animals. With special regard to spawning and nursery habitats. The Wetlands Restoration Act, H.R. 1474, enacted November 29, 1990 refers to wetland MIT Igashin Banking and provides that any person who discharges dredged or fill material into the waters of the United States must have a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers. This act is an attempt to preserve the complex communities that are found within wetlands. Wetlands are the lands between aquatic and terrestrial areas such as bogs, marshes, swamps, and coastal waters. Although wetlands were at one time considered wastelands, scientists now recognize the importance of wetlands to improve water quality, stabilize water levels, prevent flooding, regulate erosion, and sustain a variety of organisms. The United States has lost approximately 100 million acres of wetland areas between colonial times and the 1970s. The 1993 Wetlands Plan established a goal of reversing the trend of 100,000 acres of wetland loss to 100,000 acres of wetland recovery. In addition, rainforests when was the symbol of Smokey Bear first used to encourage forest fire prevention? The origin of Smokey Bear can be traced to World War II, when the U.S. Forest Service, concerned about maintaining a steady lumber supply for the war effort, wished to educate the public about the dangers of forest fires. They sought volunteer advertising support from the War Advertising Council. 
and on August 9, 1944, Albert Steele, a noted illustrator of animals, created Smokey Bear. Since 1944 Smokey Bear has been a national symbol of forest fire prevention not only in America, but also in Canada and Mexico, where he is known as Simon in both countries. This public service advertising, PSA, campaign is the longest running PSA campaign in U.S. history. In 1947 a Los Angeles advertising agency coined the slogan Only You Can Prevent Forest Fires. On April 23, 2001, after more than 50 years, the famous ad slogan was revised to Only You Can Prevent Wildfires. In response to the wildfire outbreaks during 2000, the campaign gained a living mascot in 1950 when a firefighting crew rescued a male bear cub from a forest fire in the capital mountains of New Mexico. Sent to the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., to become Smokey Bear. The animal was a living symbol of forest fire protection until his death in 1976. His remains are buried at the Smokey Bear State Historical Park in Capitan. New Mexico. What are some of the tests scientists use to identify major types of organic compounds in living organisms? Scientists use different tests to detect the presence of carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Commonly used tests include the Benedict's test for reducing sugars, the iodine test for starch, the Biorit test for proteins, the Sudan 4 test and the Grease Spot test for lipids, and the Disc Diphenylamine test for nucleic acids. What is the SI system of measurement? French scientists as far back as the 17th and 18th centuries questioned the hodgepodge of the many illogical and imprecise standards used for measurement. And they began a crusade to make a comprehensive, logical, precise and universal measurement system called System Internationale de Unites, or SI for short. It uses the metric system as its base. Since all the units are in multiples of 10, calculations are simplified. Today, all countries except the United States, Burma, and Liberia use this system. However, some elements within American society do use SI scientists. Exporting slash importing industries, and federal agencies, as of November 30, 1992. The SI or metric system has seven fundamental standards, the meter, for length, the kilogram. For mass, the second, for time the ampere, for electric current, the kelvin. For temperature, the candela, for luminous intensity, and the mole, for amount of substance. In addition, two supplementary units the radian, plane angle, and steradian, solid angle. And a large number of derived units compose the current system, which is still evolving. Some derived units, which use special names, are the Hertz, Newton, Pascal, Joule, Watt. 
Kulam, Volt, Farad, Ohm, Siemens, Weber, Tesla, Henry, Lumen, Lux, Becquerel, Gray, and Sievert. The C's unit of volume or capacity is the cubic decimeter, but many still use liter in its place. Very large or very small dimensions are expressed through a series of prefixes. Which increase or decrease in multiples of 10. For example, a decimeter is one tenth of a meter. A centimeter is one slash one hundred of a meter, and a millimeter is one slash one thousand of a meter. A decameter is ten meters, a hectometer is one hundred meters, and a kilometer is one thousand meters. The use of these prefixes enables the system to express these units in an orderly way and avoid inventing new names and new relationships. When was the EPA created and what does it do? In 1970 President Richard M. Nixon, 1913-1994, signed an executive order that created the Environmental Protection Agency. EPA, as an independent agency of the U.S. government. The creation of a federal agency. By executive order rather than by an act of the legislative branch is somewhat uncommon. The EPA was established in response to public concern about unhealthy air, polluted rivers, and groundwater. Unsafe drinking water, endangered species, and hazardous waste disposal. Responsibilities of the EPA include environmental research, monitoring, and enforcement of legislation regulating environmental activities. The EPA also manages the cleanup of toxic chemical sites as part of a program known as Superfund. How does an ultramicrotome differ from a standard microtome? The ultramicrotome, developed after 1950 to prepare specimens for examination under the electron microscope, enables technicians to cut very thin sections, 50 to 150, instead of embedding specimens in wax, small, 0.5 to 1.0 cubic mm. Biological specimens are embedded in very hard synthetic resins such as epoxy. In order to cut these very hard materials, special knives sharper than steel knives are used. The knives are either diamond knives or pieces of plate. Glass broken in a controlled way to produce a fine edge. How did the original Celsius temperature scale differ from the one in use now? In 1742 the Swedish astronomer Anders Celsius, 1701-1744, set the freezing point of water at 100 degrees Celsius and the boiling point of water at 0 degrees Celsius. It was Carolus Linnaeus, 1707-1778, who reversed the scale. But a later textbook attributed the modified scale to Celsius, and the name has remained.
why is it necessary to fix a biological specimen? Fixing a biological specimen retains a reasonably good semblance of the object as it appeared when it was alive. It allows the scientists to observe details of the external and internal anatomy of the specimen. How does the iodine test detect starch? Starch is a coiled polymer of glucose. Iodine reacts with the coiled molecules and turns bluish-black when added to a solution. A solution that remains a yellowish-brown color is a negative test for starch. Whereas one that turns bluish-black is a positive test for starch. Who invented the thermometer? The Greeks of Alexandria knew that air expanded as it was heated. Hero of Alexandria, 1st century CE, and Philo of Byzantium. Fluid CA 250 BCE, made simple thermoscopes, but they were not real thermometers. In 1592 Galileo, 1564 to 1642, made a kind of thermometer that also functioned as a barometer. And in 1612 his friend Santorio Santorio, 1561 to 1636, adapted the air thermometer, a device in which a colored liquid was driven down by the expansion of air, to measure the body's temperature change during illness and recovery. Still, it was not until 1713 that Daniel Fahrenheit 1686-1736, began developing a thermometer with a fixed scale. He worked out his scale from two fixed points. The melting point of ice and the heat of the healthy human body. He realized that the melting point of ice was a constant temperature. Whereas the freezing point of water varied. Fahrenheit put his thermometer into a mixture of ice, water, and salt, which he marked off at zero degrees. And, using this as a starting point, marked off melting ice at 32 degrees and blood heat at 96 degrees. In 1835 it was discovered that normal blood measured 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Sometimes Fahrenheit used spirit of wine as the liquid in the thermometer tube. But more often he used specially purified mercury. Later, the boiling point of water, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, became the upper fixed point of the thermometer. In what way can forest fires be good for the environment? Wildfires are critical to maintaining the integrity of forest and grassland ecosystems. Forest and grass fires usually started by lightning, act as an ecologically renewing force by creating necessary conditions for plant germination and continued healthy growth to occur. The primary goal of fire management is to simulate the revitalizing aspects of natural fire cycles. 
Fire management also attempts to prevent large catastrophic wildfires from occurring by removing accumulated debris from forests. Seen throughout the American West every summer, these extremely intense fires are caused primarily by decades of fire suppression, which has allowed heavy fuels accumulated debris to build up. Ironically, by attempting to prevent natural fires, humans have only increased their prevalence. What is the toxic release inventory? Toxic release inventory, TRI, is a government mandated publicly available compilation of information on the release of over 650 individual toxic chemicals and toxic chemical categories by manufacturing facilities in the United States. The law requires manufacturers to state the amounts of chemicals they release directly to air, land, or water, or state that they transfer to off-site facilities that treat or dispose of wastes. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency compiles these reports into an annual inventory and makes the information available in a computerized database. In 2000, 23,484 facilities released 7.1 billion pounds, 3.2 billion kilograms, of toxic chemicals into the environment. Over 260 million pounds 118 million kilograms of this total were released into surface water, 1.9 billion pounds. 86 million kilograms, were emitted into the air, over 4.13 billion pounds 1.87 billion kilograms were released to land. And over 278 million pounds 126 million kilograms were injected into underground wells. The total amount of toxic chemicals released in 2000 was 6.7% lower than the amount released in 1999. What is the purpose of a mordant? A mordant is a chemical added to the solution used to stain a specimen in order to intensify the stain. Two major functions of a mordant are to increase the affinity of a stain for a biological specimen and to coat a structure to make it thicker and easier to see upon observation under the microscope. 